All right, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the Colleges That Change Lives virtual days. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions that's happening as part of the Colleges That Change Lives virtual days, so certainly be sure to sign up for additional ones. And this presentation is being recorded, as are all the other ones. So on the website where you submitted your registration for this session, in about a week's time, they will all be available to you. And now I'm pleased to turn it over to our presenters. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this, today, wherever you are calling in from. My name is Claire Leitzen. I'm one of the senior assistant directors in the Office of Admission at Willamette University. We are very excited to be here today. And just for a quick overview, I will take a moment to pause here and introduce the rest of my team and my colleagues who are on the call today. So Sue, would you mind go ahead? Welcome everyone. My name is Sue Corner. I'm the Director of Recruitment at Willamette University. I work with students from all over the U.S., but particularly from Montana, Nevada, Idaho, and Wyoming. Thanks for being here. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kelly Strawn. I am a professor of sociology at Willamette University, and I am also the faculty associate dean for curriculum. So I know a lot about uh, our the curriculum classes, uh, matriculation through the degree, uh, among other things. And I'm also uh, the recently retired faculty athletics representative for anybody who may want to know or hear anything about athletics at Willamette. Seth? Hi everyone, my name is Seth. I'm a sophomore here at Willamette. I'm a mathematics, economics, and data science triple major, and I'm really active in the music department. Um, yeah, hi. Thanks everybody. Um, and I failed to mention earlier that I work with students from the greater Seattle area down to Tacoma and parts of the Midwest. So Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio. We're gonna jump in here. We'll give you a quick overview of Willamette University. We'll talk about the academic experience and then we'll spend some time talking about life outside the classroom. And last but not least, we'll talk about applying to and paying for college for any current seniors who are joining us this evening. We know that's probably on the forefront of your brain. We will also set, save some time at the end for any questions that you might have. Feel free to submit your questions in the chat and we do have someone we'll be answering those throughout the presentation. And if we don't get to it today, we will certainly find follow up after we're done here. So let's jump in. Willamette University was founded in 1842. We are a historic institution, the oldest university in the West. We were actually a university before the state of Oregon was recognized as a state of the union. So we like to say that Willamette and this, pardon me, the city of Salem grew up around and because of the Willamette people. So we have very deep historic roots where we are located. We're a four year private liberal arts institution and we are supported by three graduate schools, our College of Law, our Atkinson Graduate School of Management, and we were really recently joined by the Claremont School of Theology. Additionally, we're one of the 40 colleges that change lives, which is why we are all here today in partnership with StriveScan. We have been a member of the Colleges That Change Lives or the acronym CTCL for all of the iterations from its time when it started as a book to its work as a nonprofit organization now. And I would encourage you to check out the other schools that are listed among this wonderful organization. A quick number snapshot for you here. Um, we have about 1700 undergraduate students and 600 graduate students. So we are primarily an undergraduate institution. I normally joke with students if you are hoping to be anonymous when you go to college. Well, then it might not be the best place for you, right? Our average class size is 17. Our student to faculty ratio is 11 to one. So you will certainly be known by your faculty by name. You will be expected to participate and engage in the classroom. So if that's something that look, excites you when you think about your college experience, you're in the right place. We have 52 academic programs, so there's certainly no shortage of opportunities for things to study at Willamette. And as Seth shared earlier, um, most of our students will have more than one major. Um, as Seth is triple majoring there, which is obviously very impressive, most students will have maybe a double major, a major, and a minor or two, but you really get to throw a wide net over your academic experience. Couple fun facts for you here. We own 305 acres of land just north of campus, and that's called Xena. 
It's what I like to call an academic playground for our biology and environmental science students. Um, take samples and bring them back to the labs on campus. But other than that, it's a recreational space for our students to enjoy the hiking trails, kind of a peace and calm and quiet space that's only open to the Willamette community. Additionally, we have a 54 year partnership with Tokyo International University in Japan. There are other campus, Tokyo International University of America, or TIUA for short, um, is located on our campus and they send about 100 international students over every year and they're embedded into our campus cultural, um, campus um, climate. So it's a wonderful opportunity for our students to engage with international students right here um, within our campus here in Salem and a wonderful opportunity for our students to then go study abroad at Tokyo International University in Japan. We're 76 feet from the state capitol. We are the closest university to a state capitol and we'll show you a picture of that here in a few moments. 80% of the interns in the state capitol are Willamette students. So I think that speaks really well. The rapport we have with our local government but also with the city of Salem at large. Our students are very much the heartbeat of our campus community but they're also very much well respected in the city of Salem as well. And I mentioned a piece of this earlier, but we have over 66 study abroad programs in a 40, about 45 uh, countries around the world. So there's certainly no shortage of opportunities to be able to study abroad there. Right now, I will pass it off to my colleague Sue to take a virtual look of our campus. Thanks, Claire. We wish everyone were actually able to visit us in person right now. But since we're doing this virtually, we'll give you just a quick couple of pictures of, of our beautiful campus in the Northwest. The first slide that we'll show you does show a great picture um, of our relationship with the Capitol. Um, Claire, if you could move this next one. There we go. Um, <laughs> the red brick building in the forefront is Willamette's original uh, building. And you can see that proximity to the state Capitol, the building with the gold man on top, which is just um, just across the street from us. It um, sits on land that the university gifted to the state of Oregon. And you can see how our cupola lines up with the Capitol dome that was done on purpose. <laughs> so it, it really is a special proximity and relationship that we have with state government. And it's surprising how many students that affects not just students who are interested in studying politics, but students who want opportunities across the disciplines find them because of this special proximity to and relationship with state government. This picture is also fun because it shows the star trees, um, the five giant sequoias that Claire is circling <laughs> there. Um, the star trees were uh, planted on our centennial celebration. And if you stand in the middle of them and look up, it creates the shape of a star, just kind of a fun landmark on our, on our campus, sort of speaks to our tradition and history as well. The next slide um, shows you, let's see, Claire, can we move? There we go. Um, <laughs> this slide shows you kind of the center of campus. The Mill Stream uh, is a, this body of water that runs through the heart of Willamette's campus. If you know where to stand, you can see that it is in the shape of a W, uh, which is kind of a fun thing too. Contrary to popular belief, it does not rain all the time in Oregon. We have beautiful fall weather. We have wonderful spring wet weather often. And so it's so great to have the mill stream where students will line the banks during our beautiful sunny days. And um, they'll, they'll use this as a place for gathering, for studying, it's just there's something special about having water as a place to gather. The final slide that I want to show you is uh, this kind of fun map of the city of Salem. Um, and the map shows kind of where we sit in relation to the rest of the city. Claire, can we move to that next slide? There we go. Um, so you can see Willamette University in the center. You can see the state capitol building just to the uh, just above us. There we go. Claire's circling it. Um, you can also see our wonderful proximity to Salem Health, which is just across the street from us on the other side from the Capitol. Um, Willamette has a thriving pre-med program. And so to be this close to one of the state's largest hospitals um, is, is a wonderful resource for our students as well. 
can see the downtown court corridor, which we really are a part of. Lots of really great restaurants, um, cute little shops, coffee shops, pharmacy, uh, grocery store, everything that a student would want is within easy walking distance. So Willamette is really interestingly located in that we are in the heart of a capital city. So we have all of the resources of a capital city, but the downtown corridor sort of feels like a college town. So it's really accessible for our students. You can also see some large city parks and the Willamette River. We're in easy walking distance of all of those as well. Um, okay, I'm gonna turn it over to Kelly to tell us a little bit about the academic experience at Willamette. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> first thing I'd like to share with you all uh, is just the nature of the, the, the faculty student relationship at Willamette University. Claire mentioned that we have an 11 to 1 uh, faculty to student or student to faculty ratio. Uh, and it's something that all of my colleagues and myself really appreciate about our community and our culture. And it's something we take very, very seriously. Um, from the moment that you step foot on campus uh, through the end of your career, hopefully four years later, uh, you will have all sorts of opportunities to, to engage with faculty, whether it's through office hours, uh, doing uh, student research work with faculty, or virtually any other number of, of, of ways that, that faculty and students make connections. Sometimes it's dog sitting, sometimes it's babysitting, house sitting, you name it. There's all kinds of, a, of ways that students and faculty connect. I think the most important two ways that we do this are through research opportunities for students, but also through our College Colloquium, which is the second point um, on, the, on the list there. College Colloquium is the first year seminar that um, every student is enrolled in one of these. Uh, the professor for that class becomes your academic advisor for about the first year that you're at Willamette University, uh, for sure through the first semester and into the spring, at which point some students start to declare majors and move on to other advisors. But you develop a very close relationship with both your faculty member in that class and the 13 other students that would be with you in that class. We capped the college colloquium at just 14 students to make sure that um, everyone has uh, the space and the opportunity to get to know one another, to work together, uh, to interact, to provide feedback, um, and to just generally develop a very effective and uh, familiar academic learning environment. Willamette is also characterized by an innovative curriculum that um, I, I would start by talking about general education. We have very recently redesigned our general education. Um, we we had the, gave ourselves the, the rather um, significant challenge of, of making it smaller uh, without compromising its effectiveness. Uh, we, we felt like too many, there were too many requirements that students needed to get through. Um, and so we have streamlined it quite a lot um, in so doing, we have uh, added pieces that emphasize uh, experiential learning, uh, service learning opportunities, equity and diversity training, and a range of other possibilities that are now embedded in that uh, general education program. Um, we also, as I mentioned there, uh, emphasize experiential learning, and there are just so, so many ways that you could think about this. Claire has already mentioned the, the study abroad programs that we are connected to. Uh, I mentioned research with faculty. There are just a, a dozen or more different ways that this takes place. It might be doing a hand on, um, on site research at Xena Forest. It might be interning at the Capitol or anywhere in Salem, really. Claire kind of hinted it. It's not just the state capital that creates opportunities in Salem, but it is the state government, the city government, the county government, uh, the correction system. Salem Health on our south side, all of the agriculture and horticulture uh, businesses and firms that are around the area. There's just so many different ways that we connect students to experience, whether that's an internship experience, whether that's an employment experience, whether that's a research experience, whether that's a travel experience. There's just so many different ways that we try to make sure that every student has one or more opportunities uh, to embrace in terms of experiential learning. We're going to pause here for a second and Claire is going to switch us over to a short video that kind of describes the community environment uh, at Willamette University.
park really embodies the ideal of Willamette as a residential liberal arts college. The history of the hearth goes back to the renovation of Collins Science Center in 1981. One of the spaces that was last to be finalized was the space that became chemistry hearth. The architect said, okay, we'll just put some tables there with chairs and call it a hearth as a gathering place for faculty and students. We were interacting almost immediately. The hearth I see as a community space. It's kind of neat for the students in a particular discipline to feel like they have the spot that they can go where they can find the other students that are doing what they're doing. So it's really a place of connection. I have my office with a desk against the wall so that there's open space inviting people in, but the hearth also invites people out. Right outside our offices, the charm and the draws and the fact that students here feel comfortable coming up and asking a question about anything. You get a lot of time to talk one-on-one -on -one with different professors and you just learn a lot of subtle things. And you can talk to all kinds of different students. I like working in here better than I like working in the library. It's easier to find people who know what you're working on. It's social, but it's also collaborative learning. Willamette is a very egalitarian place where faculty genuinely care about students. We collaborate and share. And our doors are always open. From a good chemistry standpoint, another way to think of the space is as a bonding space. When you're working with somebody personally on something, you can just see that, the, you know, the wheels turning in their mind and there's that sort of click when the idea comes. For me, it's always a joy to see that, you know, just see the learning actually happening right in the moment. You're not a good teacher unless you can actually creatively meet students who come with a very diverse range of backgrounds. I feel like the hearth really makes us unique. I don't see why any other university wouldn't want to have this. The hearth is the simple space where very rich connections occur that really defy simple description. Excellent. <clears throat> a couple more things I'd like to share with you. Um, Willamette University has, has been really working hard to sort of renovate our definition and how we perceive the liberal arts in the 21st century. So much has changed in such a short period of time in terms of uh, technology and necessary skills to sort of live in a technological information driven world. Um, so we have been building some new programs that we are extremely excited about and that are going to be online by the beginning. Uh, some of some, two of the three that I'm going to talk about are already online. The third one should should be stood up uh, for the beginning of next year when I presume those who are watching uh, might be interested in joining us. Um, the first is the business program. We, we have not had a business major. We've had an econ major, an economics major for the last 20 plus years. Um, we are extremely excited about this. Uh, one of the one of the sort of the dynamisms that Willamette University can offer to students is is are the opportunities that cross uh, the different colleges. Uh, you would be in the College of Liberal Arts as an undergraduate, but if you declare a business major, you would then finish your degree at our business school, the Atkinson School, uh, at Atkinson Graduate School of Management. Um, that degree will be will look just like uh, our other undergraduate degrees in the sense that you would complete the general education requirements with us. You would continue to take any other classes of interest to you at the College of Arts and Sciences. Uh, but the but the 12 to 14 required classes that you would take for the business major would be taught entirely by the faculty at the Atkinson School, which is until recently entirely a graduate faculty. Uh, we have also put in place about a year and a half ago now uh, a public health degree that is arguably one of the fastest growing uh, majors on campus. Uh, it is an interdisciplinary program that brings together politics, humanities, anthropology, sociology, psychology, uh, exercise science, and a, and a range of other departments that are contributing to this. And with the resources across the street on our south side, 
with Salem Health, we expect that the that the possibilities and the and the dynamism and the various dimensions of this program will just continue to grow. Third one, uh, something I've been involved with and that I know Seth is is uh, interested in and involved with is our new data science program. Uh, this too is connected to a graduate school, the the Graduate School of Management. Um, we this degree is uh, starts out in, as a fusion or a combination of computer science and statistics and math. Uh, that forms the base. Um, then students have the opportunity to uh, take classes that, that are at the upper division in the graduate school with additional quantitative computational and data analysis training. Um, that segues nicely into the final point here, which is that this, this dynamism that we have between the undergraduate college and the graduate schools uh, is continuing to grow students can not only do just an undergraduate degree in data science, for instance, but you can now do a 3-1 Bachelor of Science, Master of Science degree uh, together with the graduate school. Um, I, I want to add that the three, the idea of a 3-1, that is finishing a master's degree in four years, kind of requires that you know when you first get to campus and you get started on, on sequencing all the necessary classes, uh, but it is possible, it will be possible going forward, um, and we are extremely excited about it, extremely proud of this particular degree. There are a handful of others that are uh, have much longer histories on our campus. One is the BA, BS with the MBA degree. Um, this is a three plus two degree. Students in any major, you could be a studio art major and still go across the street to the graduate school in your fourth year and finish uh, in two additional years a, a uh, an MBA degree through uh, the Atkinson School of Management, and you would finish in the fourth year your undergraduate degree. Finally, the, we also have a 3-3 joint uh, undergraduate law degree. Uh, this takes six years, so it's three years at the undergraduate. Uh, you finish the fourth year as your first year at the law school, similar to the, to, the, to the MBA, and then take two more years in the law school. So lots of things happening, lots of new programs, uh, lots of old programs, uh, ways of taking advantage of the, of the very unique resources that Willamette University has by being a small liberal arts campus with uh, three very outstanding graduate schools now connected to it. And it's not on the slide here, but we are uh, an, another school will be joining us very shortly, the, uh, the Pacific Northwest College of Art uh, and the, the, the plans for new programs, the possibilities uh, of our of our partnership with them. Uh, can't even begin to tell you what they will be, but we are extremely excited about it. And I believe I'm throwing it over to Seth here. And once again, my name is Seth and I am a current student here at Willamette. Um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the learning experience and student life and talk about my experience a little bit. So we have multiple forms of experiential learning opportunities and some of them are just in your regular classes. So a lot of classes at the college are designated with a service learning component. Um, my go-to example of this is my first semester, I took a Spanish class that included tutoring at our college access program, um, Willamette Academy. So in addition to everything you would expect in a Spanish class, I also got to um, learn hands-on tutoring in Spanish, um, which was pretty awesome. Outside of regular classes, there are also multiple types of research opportunities available to undergraduates. If you're not familiar with research in this collegiate sense, um, it basically means creating new knowledge. And that's something that you can do at Willamette, which is awesome. Um, because we're a small school with a robust research faculty, it is entirely feasible for you to research with a professor. I'm personally looking at doing some research in econ over winter break, um, which would probably just not be an opportunity for me at a much larger school with a lot more people trying to get those positions. Um, and just yesterday, I met with someone who's doing some uh, archival research in queer relationships with the psychology department. Um, so it really spans across majors. Uh, there's a lot of research to be done here. And in addition to on-campus research, professors will also support you if you pursue an external research experience for undergraduates, or REU. Um, with the support of my advisors, I had the opportunity to complete an REU in mathematics just this past summer. And it was a fantastic learning experience in the real world of math. Um, so professors will support you in trying to take opportunities, even if they're not present within the college. Uh, aside from research, as was mentioned before, a lot of students complete internships during their time at Willamette. And we said before that over 80% of internships at the state capitol at any time are filled by Willamette students. And that's pretty amazing. 
Being in the Willamette Valley and in the heart of the state government, we have access to internships at the state capitol, at other public organizations, um, like the Public Utilities Commission is one that I'm personally interested in. Um, there's nonprofits all over the place. We're right near the high-tech hub of Oregon, um, really, you name it. I currently have a communications internship with the mathematics department, which is a really cool way to overlap different things that I'm interested in. And there's opportunities like this all over the place. One other part of experiential learning that I should talk about is study abroad. Um, about half of all students at Willamette complete a study abroad experience at some point during their time. Um, and a lot of the time your scholarship completely transfers so it can actually be less expensive to study abroad, which is pretty awesome. We have an Office of International Education which provides advising and support and help with transcripts for students who are interested in studying abroad. And there are many Willamette sponsored and external organizations that are available to study abroad. Uh, and then a little bit about why I chose Willamette. When I visited here as a high school student and I attended some classes, I got a really strong sense of what students were like and of what professors were like. On the student, student body community side, I saw how you can literally just walk up to anyone and start a conversation and make a new friend. We have that really strong small school community here and that's really valuable to me. Um, people are really passionate about their academic and their personal interests and they love to talk about it. And on the faculty side, our professors, as mentioned before, are teachers first. Um, all classes here are taught by professors and not TAs and professors put their students before their research and they have open door policies um, right around the hearths that you just saw a video about. And because of the small student faculty ratio and because of the attention that they give, they are able to um, cater the specific styles of learning of students. Um, so you can really feel and see in your results how much professors care. Um, next slide, please. So a little bit about life outside of the classroom. As I mentioned before, people here have a lot of passions and we are a very involved campus and a very involved student body. As you can see here on the slide, an average student is involved in two to three clubs or activities outside of class. And there's a lot of different clubs and activities to choose from. We have more than 100 student run organizations. We have an outdoor program, a community service learning organization, uh, multicultural and affinity groups, and a student government. And then we also have stuff like Nerf Club and Boffer Club and cool stuff like that. Um, my favorite part of all of this is that last bullet point there. We have 20 music ensembles and performance arts clubs in dance and theater and other arts. We have choir, orchestra, wind ensemble, hip hop, J-pop. We have uh, a stage company. We have an improv club. We, we have a lot of really cool performance arts group. Um, and something that I really value about uh, at liberal arts schools and especially Willamette is that here you can participate in any of these arts regardless of your major. You can audition for a play if you're not a theater major. Um, or like for me, I have a pretty quantitative and non-artistic major, you could argue, but I also get to sing in choir and vocal jazz and acapella and all that. And yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of opportunities for extracurriculars. And if you somehow run out of things to do, or if there isn't a club that you're interested in, it is very easy to create your own club and get funding. Next slide, please. In addition to arts and clubs, we have a lot of student athletes. We are an NCAA Division III school, which means that we have varsity athletes who are students first. Um, and as of next fall, we will have 20 different NCAA varsity sports because we are adding women's triathlon. If you're not, if you're into sports, but you're not into varsity athletics, we do also have intramural and club sports. I know a lot of people who play these at various levels of casual and um, they have great communities. We do also have a moderate presence of fraternities and sororities here on campus, including a few sorority houses. And then we also have some pretty awesome traditions. So Sue pointed out earlier, we have five giant sequoia on campus forming a beautiful star called the star trees. And we have this lovely tradition in the late fall of lighting them up like Christmas trees. And I've heard that this is the largest tree lighting ceremony in the country, including the Rockefeller tree lighting ceremony in New York. So take that New York. Um, and we also make a whole event out of it. Uh, we have winter carols and hot cocoa and just people celebrating, it's beautiful. 
Another really important part of Willamette is our student-run coffee shop, the Bistro, which was started by two econ majors back in the day. And they sell $1 cookies, which are the size of your face. No joke. Every day, all year, $1 cookies. Um, they are delicious. We also have annual multicultural events, including a big luau and a social powwow. Next slide, please. Okay, and I wanna finish out with a really cool fun fact from Willamette. We have earned the same Guinness World Record twice. In 2013, we held the largest game of red light, green light in the world in history with over a thousand students. And then in 2014, the NFL totally ripped us off with a similar event and stole our title. And you know, it's, it's like they can get a lot of people together, whatever. So in true Willamette fashion in 2015, we won it back with another game with 1,203 bear cats, which is a pretty big chunk of our student body. So that gives you a taste of what Willamette's like. I'm gonna pass it back to Sue to talk a bit about living on campus. Thank you, Seth. Seth is one of my all time favorite students. So it's so fun to hear him talk about Willamette and all that he's doing here. Um, I wanna tell you just a little bit about living on campus. We are, as has been mentioned, a residential uh, liberal arts college, which means that part of the learning happens um, because of the fact that you're living in community with your peers. Um, you're learning to live with others in a way that really enhances your education. So we ask that all first and second year students live on campus. Juniors and seniors have the option to move off campus into apartments or houses that are in the local vicinity. I would say about half of our juniors and seniors, maybe just, just a little bit less than half of our juniors and seniors move off campus. So a good number of our, of our students stay on campus the entire four years with us. And I think it's worth mentioning that it really is pretty atypical for anyone to stay with us longer than four years. I know um, a lot of places these days, classes can get impacted and majors are hard to access and you end up um, having to commit to five or even six years to complete your four-year degree, that doesn't happen at Willamette. The classes that you need are available to you, and, and it really is a four-year program. Um, in terms of living on campus, we have uh, two different dining halls. One of them, Kaneko, is at Tokyo International University of America that uh, Claire mentioned. At Gaudi Commons is our main dining commons where students will eat the majority of their meals. And what's fun to know about Gaudi is it sort of serves as a restaurant to the local community. <laughs> the lunches there are so good um, that we find folks from across the street at the Capitol coming over to eat lunch in our dining commons on a really regular basis. The food is, is very good. They do a great job um, of managing special dietary needs and really being responsive to students um, when they ask for change in the dining commons. And then the question that always comes up about living on campus, can you bring a car? <laughs> yes, you can. Even first year students are welcome to have a car if they would like to. I, if you think back to that map that I showed you earlier, uh, we do sit at the heart of Salem. Everything that you really need as a student is within pretty easy walking distance of where we are. So I don't think students necessarily need a car right off the bat. Um, but you're certainly welcome to bring one if you want to. They, they tend to sit quite a bit, <laughs> but there are some lovely things in the surrounding community to get to. Uh, we do live in a beautiful part of the country, so sometimes a car can be nice to have in terms of just getting off campus now and then. Um, just to show you a couple of other pictures of living on campus. This is a typical residence hall room. Um, we have a variety of different styles of living options. Um, most of them look somewhat like this in terms of being a two person residence hall room. Um, we do have some that are quads. We have some that are triples. Occasionally a student will have a single. Um, there's apartment style living for juniors and seniors. So lots of different options. One thing I love about how we manage um, on campus living for our first year students is all first year students live in the same residence hall complex. So when you're preparing to move to campus in the summer before your freshman year, um, there aren't any questions or worries about, well, where should I live? Which hall should I pick 
Am I going to meet people? Am I going to be able to make friends? Is this the right place to be? It's absolutely the right place to be because you're all together. We really are interested in helping you build that class community with the group that you're moving through this important four-year experience with. And so we start you all together so that you really get to make those important bonds right from the beginning. And then all of our residence halls have common spaces. So um, this is an example of one that was recently renovated and it's really beautiful. Um, they all have these gathering spaces just to foster that community that we feel so strongly about. So students always have a place um, where they can do a little bit of cooking. There's a, there's a kitchen in the common spaces. There are places to gather. There's usually a fireplace. Sometimes there's a piano. Um, just lots of places where students can, can come together and feel like their residence hall is more than just their room. It's actually a home that they're sharing with many of their peers. I want to talk just for a little bit about the application process and actually how you apply to Willamette and pay for this type of education. Um, we are a common application institution, so that's exclusively the application form that we use. We don't have um, an institutional form of our own, just the common app. We never charge an application fee because we don't want that to be a barrier to anyone's ability to apply to Willamette. We don't ask for supplemental essays. We ask for um, really good work and attention to be paid to the primary essay that is asked for as part of the common application. We do care a great deal about your writing ability. That's a great academic indicator um, for us of your preparation for Willamette, um, but we don't need to dilute that work over a number of essays. We just asked for the one. Um, and Willamette is test optional. I know a lot of schools are going test optional right now because access to SAT and ACT scores has been so, or tests has been so difficult. Um, we've been test optional for a number of years. There isn't a strong correlation at Willamette between high test scores and achievement or low test scores and lack of achievement. Uh, the, the correlation for us is really between your transcript and the the good solid work that you've done in high school on a day-to-day -day basis and achievement. So we look very closely at your transcripts. We do not need test scores. And test scores are not in, um, factored into our admission process or our merit-based scholarship process. So that's important to know. Um, we have application deadlines. Uh, early deadlines, both early decision, which is binding, and early action, which is not. Both of those deadlines are November 15th. It's important to designate which one you are choosing if you decide to apply early. Um, early decision, again, is binding. If you um, choose that route, uh, if you are admitted, then you immediately withdraw other applications from any other schools. Early action is not binding. It's simply a way to apply early so that you can hear back from us a little bit earlier and then have the entire spring of your senior year to really know where you stand and to do some more explanation exploration on your own. I'm a big fan of early action. <laughs> Regular decision is a great application route too. Um, the deadline is January 15th. If you apply with us then, we will let you know by early March if you've been admitted. Um, you have a little bit less time to make your decision about Willamette, but some students will choose regular decision because they'd like to have the winter break to really finalize their application and, and use that time to make it um, just right. Again, optional parts of the application for us, uh, SAT, ACT scores are completely optional. You can choose to be test optional or not when you fill out your common application. Um, we ask for one letter of recommendation from your high school counselor. We encourage at least one letter of recommendation from a high school teacher who knows you well or has seen what kind of contribution you can make. Additional letters of recommendation are optional and they are fine. Um, we don't need 10. It's hard for us to read that many. So you want to choose wisely. And I would say um, one to two letters of recommendations from your teachers is probably the way to go.
There is a way to include a resume um, as part of your common application. You can just attach it and we love to see those. Uh, the resume should not replace the list of activities that's actually asked for in the common application, uh, but it is a great addition. And, and so we, we encourage that. And then the interview we really encourage, um, we, uh, we just love the one-on-one -on -one interaction that we get with an um, applicant if they choose to do an, a virtual interview with us. Those are readily available through our website. And so I would encourage you to look into that if you're interested in applying to Willamette. Very quickly, I know we're running short on time. I'll tell you just a little bit about funding. All students who apply to Willamette through the Common App um, are eligible for a merit scholarship. Almost every single person who is deemed eligible to Willamette um, receives some level of merit award. The top award is $30,000 per year, and those awards are renewable each of the four years that you're with us. So if you look at our costs and think they seem high, then you look at the amount of um, merit award that we can offer and those costs become a whole different picture. Um, we really are able to help students a lot. We have several competitive scholarships. You can see the categories there. Those awards stack on top of the merit award that we've already given. Um, they have a separate application process, which is why we call them competitive awards. They're very easy to find on our website. And if you have interest in any of the areas listed here, I would highly encourage you to look into applying for a competitive scholarship. They really can make a difference. And then of course, most of our students receive some level of need-based financial aid. We use the FAFSA for that um, and that's available online anytime. I'll toss it back to Claire for final questions. Wonderful, thanks so much, Sue, appreciate that. Um, Seth, I'm going to hand the first question to you here. Um, I'm wondering, we had a student who asked, I don't know what I want to major in. When do I have to decide? And so I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about what that looks like for students and maybe briefly, we have in about a minute here, um, what your kind of academic exploration has been, because I know there's a new piece recently for you. Absolutely. Um, that's a great question. It is generally recommended, and I would definitely recommend going to college without a super structured plan for what you want to major in and what you want to do for the next 10 years. The advice that I always got from advisors and the advice that I give to people is to come in, take the classes that you're interested in, and your major will be structured around that. And whatever you do later will be structured around what you're passionate about and what you've majored in. Um, it's totally okay to not know what you want to major in. Most people I know are declaring their major sometime in their sophomore year. Um, I came in with a pretty good idea of what I wanted to do. Um, I had an idea of wanting to do some combination of math, econ, data science, and a couple other social sciences and arts. And I had meetings with professors. I had a really long conversation with Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. Um, and I decided to declare in math and econ. Um, and then this year I took my first data science related class and I found that I like I like data science a lot and it's like the thing that's making me really academically excited right now and I looked at the very accessible information for what the major requirements are and I realized it would be a good idea to add that um, so that's what that was like for me in particular but big takeaway don't stress over not knowing what your major is there is support for you and there is exploration time awesome thanks Seth I know we've got about one more minute here so I just want to wrap up with um, a few housekeeping things from us at Willamette. We do have a few um, fall virtual open houses for you to join if you haven't yet already. We have one this Saturday and then we also have one the first Saturday in November. It's a great overview and opportunity to chat with, a few, chat with a few more faculty members as well as current students. And then we also offer daily um, virtual information sessions, virtual tours, and we are currently offering um, single family um, in-person tours if you are willing and available to come to our campus safely for that. Thank you so much for spending a piece of your afternoon or evening with us, depending on where you're calling in from. It was wonderful to chat with you. Here's our contact information, and we hope to hear from you soon. Great. Thank you so much to all of our presenters, and thank you to everyone for joining us this evening. When this webinar ends, there will be a link to a very quick four-question survey, and we would appreciate any feedback that you could provide. Just a reminder that this was one of many sessions being hosted by the colleges that changed lives, so be sure to register for additional ones 
And in about a week's time, a recording of this session and all others will be available on the same website where you initially registered. Thanks again for joining us and have a great night. Thank you.